because for the first time ever, scientists have discovered a cave on the moon, an underground cave. It lies about 150 meters beneath the surface. This wasn't the Michio Kaku the world thought it knew. The man who once laughed softly while describing wormholes now stood trembling, his voice breaking in front of a hall of scientists. He paused too long, his eyes fixed on an image glowing faintly behind him. So all the responses of the human are on a digital signal. You put it on a laser beam and shoot it to the moon. In one second, your digital brain is on the moon. Something about the silence in that room felt heavier than gravity itself. Everyone expected numbers, charts, and predictable data from the moon. Instead, what unfolded was closer to a confession. A truth so profound, it stripped away certainty. The Apollo missions left us with more than discoveries. They left us with silence, lost tapes, missing voices, and whispers of things never meant to be heard. If the moon was placed, then perhaps it still watches us tonight. And when Kaku finally spoke, even the brightest minds could not look away. The discovery beneath the surface. At first, the scans showed nothing unusual. A layer of dust, craters shaped by ancient impacts, the same lifeless face we had seen for centuries. But when the instruments pushed deeper, cutting below the crust with beams of quantum imaging, the picture began to fracture. Instead of solid stone, the technology revealed vast hollows. There were no small gaps or tunnels left behind by cooling lava. These were immense chambers, some stretching for hundreds of kilometers. And they were not scattered randomly. Their edges ran straight, their walls formed precise angles, and their layouts repeated in ways that could not belong to chance. The discovery alone would have been enough to shake belief. Moon's anomalies spark theories. Artificial structure, strange metals, geometric precision, and ancient myths challenge science. But then came the heat. Sensitive thermal detectors registered faint, rhythmic pulses inside those hidden spaces. The temperatures were consistent, focused in narrow regions, rising and falling like controlled energy rather than chaotic geology. Geologists had seen empty tubes before on Earth and Mars. They knew how molten rock could carve caverns. But this was different. These voids were not curved or rough. They were aligned, ordered, almost as if they had been placed according to a plan. The room grew heavy as the images stacked together. Hollow spaces deep inside the moon, warm with invisible energy, organized with precision. The possibility that the moon was more than a silent sphere suddenly seemed real. Beneath its quiet shell, something appeared to be waiting, something that carried the unmistakable mark of design. The Lunar Grid For decades, scientists noticed strange shifts in the moon's pull. Small irregularities in gravity, dismissed as faulty instruments or minor quirks of terrain. But with new maps, those inconsistencies came alive. When charted together, they formed a vast network that stretched from pole to pole, crossing craters and seas with uncanny precision. It was not chaos. It was an order. The lattice resembled a skeleton, as if the moon's body was being held in place by invisible beams. Three different agencies confirmed the same pattern. Each map overlaid perfectly, creating a grid too deliberate to deny. The implications were staggering. If this system were still active, it meant the moon's role was larger than anyone imagined. Science is baffled as lunar craters, metals and orbits suggest moon may not be natural. It wasn't just circling Earth. It might have been designed to stabilize it, to hold the tides in rhythm, to keep the axis steady, perhaps even to nurture life itself. The thought sent a shiver through the hall. The moon, our silent companion, may not simply orbit us. It might be working. It might be regulating everything we call home. Myth and memory. As the science unfolded, Kaku shifted to stories far older than satellites. On the screen appeared fragments of Sumerian tablets, Egyptian carvings, and Mayan codices. Each carried a strange similarity. They spoke of a sky without the moon, of nights before its arrival. Some even described gods descending from it, bearing knowledge and fire. For centuries, these accounts were dismissed as myth. 
symbolic tales told by ancient people to explain the heavens. But placed beside the new data, they seemed less like invention and more like memory. Perhaps fragments of truth carried through time in song and stone. Then came the eclipses. Perfect alignments, rare in the cosmos, yet common here. The moon's size and distance allow it to block the sun with flawless precision. Was this a chance, or was it arranged? The hall grew still. Old stories and modern science had begun to weave together, forming a tapestry that hinted at something greater, something placed above us long ago. Metals beneath the crust. The next images were stranger still. Subsurface radar exposed bright reflections buried deep below the lunar shell. At first, they appeared to be scattered minerals, but their shapes gave them away. They were arranged in patterns, clustered in grids, forming alignments that no natural deposit could make. Analysis revealed they were not ordinary ores. These were alloys, unfamiliar to modern science. They bent and absorbed radar signals in unnatural ways, as if designed for that very purpose. In computer models, their strength defied explanation. Under simulated pressure, they acted like armor, shielding whatever lay inside. It no longer looked like random geology, it looked like construction. Some whispered of machines long buried, others of a protective casing, a shell built to endure the violence of time, meteors, and silence. Whatever the truth, the moon's hidden metals seemed less like the work of nature and more like the fingerprints of intelligence left behind in the darkness for us to find. The moon rings like a bell. The evidence was not all new. Some of it had been waiting, forgotten in archives. During Apollo 12, engineers directed the empty ascent stage to crash into the moon. Seismometers placed by astronauts recorded the impact. What came back was so unusual that many dismissed it outright. The moon did not shudder like solid rock. It vibrated. It echoed. For nearly an hour it rang, as if it were hollow. Later missions confirmed the same phenomenon. Each time the tremors repeated, long and drawn out, unlike anything expected from stone. At the time, scientists offered cautious guesses. Perhaps the dryness of lunar rock caused the effect, but the data never fully matched. Now, with new models, the results appear in a darker light. The moon behaves less like a natural body and more like something reinforced, like a structure designed to resonate. It was not groaning under stress, it was answering. And once again, the question returned, answering to what and for whom? Strange signals from the dark side. From the moon's hidden side, faint pulses rise, patterns too precise for nature, as if something out there is listening and waiting. Radio telescopes have long caught whispers from the far side of the moon. Most were faint bursts, easily written off as background noise, but with better instruments, patterns began to emerge. Low frequency emissions appeared at fixed locations, repeating at steady intervals. They did not match solar winds, nor did they behave like static from deep space. When scientists ran the signals through advanced filters, something strange appeared. Buried within the noise were repeating pulses, ordered sequences that resembled code, not random, not natural, almost like a language left unfinished. Even more unsettling, the emissions seemed to grow stronger whenever spacecraft passed behind the moon, as if something hidden there reacted to our presence, acknowledging it. Some suggested a beacon, others a system still running after ages of silence. The moon, once thought lifeless, now looked less like a passive rock and more like a listening post. If it could respond, then it meant one thing. It was aware. The precision of orbit. The moon's path around Earth has always seemed too perfect. It moves with a stability unmatched by other moons in the solar system. While most wobble over time, ours stays balanced locked in rhythm as if fixed by design. Even more remarkable is the way it turns. One side forever faces Earth, the far side hidden, as though chosen. This tidal lock is explained in textbooks, but the odds of it aligning so neatly are impossibly small. Then there is the eclipse. Nowhere else do we see a moon that can cover its sun so exactly, creating a spectacle that feels staged. Its size and distance match with a precision beyond chance. For years, these details were passed off as a coincidence, but placed beside the new findings, coincidence feels weak. Too many perfections point to something more, 
The orbit does not seem accidental. It seems arranged, as though the moon was meant to be exactly where it is, exactly how we see it. Erased Apollo Evidence Not all of the mystery comes from discoveries. Some comes from what has been lost. Many of the original Apollo recordings, from telemetry to astronaut voice logs, are missing. Some were taped over, others quietly filed away, never resurfacing. Official explanations speak of storage limits and accidents. But those who worked close to the missions recall something different. This accident was much like playing solitaire. And you pull up a card, each card was a crisis. There were moments when astronauts spoke of strange lights moving under the horizon. Times when communications were cut off suddenly, as their craft slipped behind the far side, even reports of metallic sounds, echoes rising from beneath their boots as though machinery slept under the dust. Years later, a few retired engineers began to whisper. They claimed private briefings were held, where astronauts were told to stay silent about certain events. Warnings were given and questions ended. The Apollo missions left us with more than discoveries. They left us with silence. Lost tapes, missing voices, and whispers of things never meant to be heard. If the moon was placed, then perhaps it still watches us tonight. Kaku did not dwell on conspiracy, but he could not ignore the weight of silence. Sometimes the things hidden are as telling as the things revealed. And the missing voices of Apollo leave shadows that grow darker with every unanswered question. The hall emptied, but the silence stayed. The moon, once a symbol of romance and calm, now felt heavier, closer, almost watching. Kaku's trembling words lingered, not as theory, but as a warning. If the moon is more than stone, then everything we know about life, about history, about our place in the universe changes. Perhaps it was placed. Perhaps it still serves a purpose we cannot yet see. And if that purpose stirs again, will we be ready? Look up tonight. The answer may already be written in the shadows above us.